Uh, welcome back to our story here of the Copperfield remodel project that we're doing. It's a kitchen remodeling project that we're completely gutting and today was beam installation day. So basically what we did today was we installed a load bearing beam. So the reason for installation of the beam is because we have a load bearing wall that we wanted to remove. And basically a load bearing wall is a wall that carries a structural weight from above. So it could be a second floor or it can be a component that's holding up the roof. And without that wall, it would collapse. So we need to replace the wall with a beam that spans the length of the space that we want to open up. finished all our demo a couple of days back. One of the first things that we have to do is cut back some of the framing so it can accept the new beam. And we did that by calculating the height, the thickness of the beam, and cut it out exactly so we can lift it up in place. On a lot of your TV shows, or the other videos that you may see, you'll often see a mechanical support system lifting up a beam into place. And we've often used those mechanisms in the past. However, with this particular case, because the length of the beam was wider than the two furthest points in the room, we wouldn't have been able to lift it up into place. So we had to kind of figure out which way we we're gonna bring in the beam and how we were gonna insert it into place. So you'll see that we kind of angle it up onto one corner and pick it up into place, slide it into the cavity of the left wall and then once that's positioned into place go to the other side and we lift it up and put that one into place The beam that we installed today had a directional, which basically means that it has an up or down side. Not every beam that we've installed or that's available has a directional, but the ones that do are built in a way where it has a slight crown to it. So once weight is bared down, it levels out over time. This particular beam, it was six, by 18 by 22 feet long and we trimmed off some of the edges and basically i think it ended up being about 21 and a half feet total of beam with a 20 foot span so about uh, six inches on one side and about six inches on the other that was into the cavity of the wall One of the first things that we like to do once the material's on site is to separate the good lumber with the bad. And believe it or not, not all the bad lumber is not usable. Uh, some of the lumber components can be used to install blocking or for scraps of wood, shimming out pieces, uh, things of that nature. So we try to use as much of the material as we can, but separating your straight lumber with your bad is gonna give you the best job for future trades, such as your drywall installation and ultimately give you the best product that we can provide. So after the beam was installed, what we did was cut back some of the ceiling joists so we can frame out a tray ceiling. It's a design feature in a ceiling 
that kind of gets bumped up so it gives you the illusion of a taller ceiling and the space that we framed out for the tray was going to be eight feet wide by 10 feet long and after everything is completed and drywalled what we're going to do is put up some stained either shiplap or beadboard to really give the ceiling a nice pop and for it to be an accent feature in the kitchen <laughs> So while the framing has been complete, uh, one of the last things that I like to do is check the perimeters where the framers have completed all the framing and blocking that's needed to install drywall. The blocking in the corner isn't necessarily a structural feature. It's just a place for the drywall to be nailed up and sometimes those areas are overlooked. The drywall crew is in and they start to install drywall. There are points in the corners where the drywall can't get fastened into. Uh, so to avoid that, we give it one final go around to make sure that the next phase is ready to start. So once again, our team has done an amazing job with our framing. Our team is unbelievable. I uh, can't give them enough credit for what they do. We all work together and get the job done. We have a good plan of action going forward. We have all of our materials on site, so it doesn't stall the process and we get a good workflow going. I really can't wait to get to the next step with this project. We've made some design changes along the way and I'm looking forward to implementing those and showing you what the next step in the process looks like for this kitchen remodel. So hope you guys join in on the next video and we'll share some exciting things on how we get this build going. Thanks a lot and have a good day and we'll see you next time.